Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And we are jumping back into the Pi Hostess series. And this time we are gonna be jumping into the 64-bit version of Pi OS, as well as installing WireGuard. So let's get started. So a week ago, I decided to decommission my Dell server, the one that you saw a couple of months ago. Now, that doesn't mean it's going away from this channel. It's just, I am trying to test something out and it relies on not using that server for a bit. So I completely turned it off, which means everything that I'm gonna be using off that server or what I was using off that server is gonna be transferred over to either my Raspberry Pi or maybe one of the mini PCs that I have. This way I could reduce my energy costs. Now we are getting deeper and deeper into the Pi Hostess series where we have a lot more applications that we had before. We started with like 90, now we're up to like 100 plus. I soon start to realize that a lot of my stuff that I run on my main server, I could be ran on the Raspberry Pi and that's what I'm starting to do. Like my WireGuard server, that's my number one thing. So I got it down to about six servers that I absolutely need on my Dell server that I have to find a way to transfer. So one is WireGuard, two is my downloading server, okay, if you know what that means. Um, then I have a Windows machine that I solely remote into to do a lot of my work. I have a Linux testing machine. Then I have a DaVinci Resolve database machine. I have one more in there that I can't really remember, but I know I use it for Linux and I have some services running in the background that I need to run on the Raspberry Pi as well. So the first thing we need to tackle is to get the Raspberry Pi working with a 64-bit version of Pi OS and get WireGuard up and running first because that is my main connection to the house. So that is most needed. So to start off, we're gonna be running Raspberry Pi Imager and we're gonna be imaging the 64-bit version of Pi OS into an SD card or a hard drive if you are planning to run that route. And then we have to do some configurations where we allow SSH and we're gonna set up uh, the local time zone and stuff like that. As soon as that is done, we could pop this right over to our Raspberry Pi and get it started. All right, now that we slapped the SD card into our Raspberry Pi, uh, we could SSH over to it. Now, if you guys remembered, I actually called the host name PIH. So I'm just gonna do SSH Pi at PIH and it should be able to bring me to that location. Now, if your router doesn't do that, then you would have to go into your router and try to figure out what the IP address is. But otherwise, we just have to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. Now, once we're done with that, I am actually gonna head over to our pihosted.com. And this will actually bring us to our new website where it has all the information that you need to install Docker and to install um, the portainer. So let's pop over to here, make that to that side. This goes this side. And I'm basically gonna follow this thing right here, which is install Docker. This is just a shortcut key to the same thing. And also, uh, while we're here waiting for that, we could also show you Nova, oh, not Nova Spirit, github.com slash pi dash hosted. And this is where our new repository is gonna be. There's only one repository inside, which is pi hosted. And all the stuff is very up to date. And there's a lot of things that's going on in my Discord to get all these things like added into the system or when there's questions about it, somebody would be able to help. But if you guys are running into issues of the actual Docker itself, then you should probably follow up with the person who's the Git maintainer of that project itself because we could help you figure out how you install it or something's missing between the link of the Raspberry Pi and the portainer. Maybe a folder needs to be added or something in the template that needs to be modified to fix for the install. But ultimately, if the software isn't working itself you should reach out back to the creator of that particular resource that you are trying to work while the discord is quite busy on trying to figure out a lot of stuff again if you have a problem with the actual software that's probably something you should reach out to them but yeah everything is in its new home um, I will still be updating my Nova spirit dash pi hosted but it will be linked over to here but so basically it will be pushed to this repository and if you guys are still using my old repository it kind of goes back and forth where I, my repository still gets updated, but eventually this will be the main resource for Pi Hosted series. Okay, now that everything is installed, I am gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi. Shouldn't take too long since there's like nothing going on in there and we are using the 64-bit. Should be slightly faster on the boot up. That's how I felt when I switched over to 
64 bit and we're using light version so it's not even gonna jump into any desktops so I am gonna try to log back in and obviously it's still booting so let's try that again all right it took like literally a minute I think 60 seconds or less uh, so here we are going back into our pie and the next thing we need to do is install Portainer. So I'm going to install this and grab that. Control Shift V or middle mouse button if you want to paste it right away. Now when you're done with installing Portainer, we still need to update it. That was one of my little issues that I had. Um, I did not update the Portainer so I wasn't able to get the latest version of the template or support the latest version. So remember after this little bit that you just finished, uh, we will have to re uh, we have to update it with the bottom link. Now while we're waiting for that, another thing I noticed is that they actually added documentation uh, to the and something called the app list. This gets automatically generated every time we add something to the portainer. So if you're looking for a specific app and you don't want to install the template just to see if we have it or not, you could just go into the app template uh, MD right over here and look down the list. All right, now that that is installed, we are gonna drop in and do the second one. This time we're gonna use middle mouse button. Slap that in there. It's gonna take the same amount of time because it's just doing an update. And we are gonna grab the 64-bit version of the Portainer. So I'm gonna pre-copy that because we're gonna be popping into there in a sec. But for now, yeah, anything you wanna look up in the readme, in the docs, you have everything over here for specific installations uh, like WireGuard or anything. Yeah, it's all in here. But what we're going to be doing is getting Portainer working. And the most important part is getting my WireGuard up and going because now that I have no main server, I am going to be relying on this Raspberry Pi to be my WireGuard VPN to get back into the house. Now that that is installed, I don't think I have to reboot it. So I should just be able to go to HTTP PIH colon 9000 and there we go portainer this is the first time we're logging in so i have to make a password and let's create the user and there we have it all right let me expand this screen and i am going to go to home slap on this machine and head over to settings and put my 64 bit version of the json save settings app templates and this should load and there we have it our complete list of the pi hosted series now the first thing i'm going to do i just scroll down to the bottom is because i am going to do the wire guard server so while we're here let's do that we can name this whatever we want we're just going to leave it as wire guard the wg host is your external ip or your dynamic dns url or whatever it is to your house so for now i am just going to leave it as example.domain.com i'm going to change that to whatever my house is in the future as far as the password we do have the change here and i'm just going to keep this as raspberry for the password for the port itself this is the default port for wireguard i could leave this now for the default dns you could either leave 1.1.1.1 what i would do is just leave your ip address so if you're using one, your gateway is 192.168.1.1, I would just use that instead. You could ultimately just keep it on 1.1.1, but yeah, you, I would change this. Now for my network is 105.1, so I'm going to change that. And WG or WireGuard allow IP. This is for every traffic. So basically, if you turn on WireGuard on your phone, any traffic that goes through your phone will tr uh, go through your network at home. So depends how you want to set up your network uh, you could just leave this as is or if you want to just use um, your wire guard for network resources only you would change this to something like 192.168.105.0 slash 24 so anything that hits this IP go through the wire guard so that's up to you I'm gonna leave it as zero because I am gonna get everything through and that's all the settings you really need to do. Now we could just deploy the stack. What I do like about this WireGuard version is that everything is almost set up with a GUI. So if I needed to create a new config file or uh, attach a new uh, phone or device, uh, I could do QR codes instead of sending the QR, uh, the config file over. So I really like using this interface versus a lot of other interfaces that I have, especially the open WRT wire guard that my router actually supports, which I am not using is because I don't like to generate the config files in the back end. So 
I like using this software a lot more. That's why I decided to switch this over to this version of Docker instead. Okay, now that everything is all set up, there is a port that you need to go into so you can configure everything. So I'm gonna go into my dashboard, containers, and this one, 51821. So basically, if I switch over to 51821, it will give me a web GUI. And in here is the password that we set earlier, which is Raspberry. And that is it. Now, if I want to add new clients, I could just add it over here, which I'll show you in a second how easy it is to set up clients. So here we have our three uh, clients that I have already set up on my um, actual production uh, Pi hosted uh, machine. I'm gonna show you how I'm setting up my phone. So basically, I'm gonna hit the add button. And from here, we are gonna import QR code. And this is waiting for the camera itself. From here, I just need to add new, and I'm just gonna name this 000. It's just easier. Create. It creates a new one on the bottom called 000, and I just have to either download the config file or I could open the QR code, which in change allows me to scan that in, and I could name this whatever I want, so I'm just gonna keep it with 000 create tunnel all right now I have zero 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 on top all right and I'm gonna show you this part once I hit zero 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 enable that okay there you go zero 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 is being active and all the traffic is transferring through and you see that little red dot which means it is active. And there we have it. It's just a super simple configuration menu and it allows for QR code generation and also config file generation. So it makes it a lot easier. It also uses pre-share keys and you could still modify the config if you needed to, if you don't want to use, you know, 0.0.0.0 or something else. But yeah, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just a quick video of me trying to get right back into the Pi Hosted using a 64-bit version of Pi OS as well as reintroducing you guys to the new Pi Hosted website and the new Pi Hosted Git. And WireGuard is one of my favorite applications to use for VPN, so this was my first initial setup, what I have coming in the future. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below or join my Discord because it's going to get really busy in there. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.